Ravi, we're back once more. We didn't fail our obligation to stop for another, what, nine months? Nine months, <laughs> yeah. The gaps are getting shorter, and that's what we're in. They are for. getting shorter. The good thing about this gap is we actually uh, pulled through. Um, you were traveling, right? So we, we, we actually yeah. couldn't record. You're in a, in a land far away where the uh, uh, internet is banned. <laughs> the, the internet's banned and everything is watched. Um, <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's always fun to visit these places because you realize, I guess, some of the pros and the cons. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that was it was good fun. Um, but, yeah, we, when we missed our first recording date. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we've been trying to find one ever since. I think we, we, we were messaging about this episode on the 15th a month ago. of June. A month ago, a month ago. exactly. Literally a month ago, yeah. yeah. We were supposed to record this a month ago, right before yeah. you went abroad. That was the deadline. And then... I became ill and uh, sorry, like kids, like just life happened and yeah. we were pushing it like too close. And then I just said, ah, no, let's, let's do it when you get back. And then I didn't And then football up. didn't come That's, home. Yeah. Football didn't come home. Yeah. I was going, are you wearing a football shirt? No, you're not wearing a football shirt. Oh, it's Puma. It's a Puma. It's Puma. Nah, well I thought be. it might've been a football shirt. Um, no. Yeah. Football did not come home for all the Euros. But it came home last year. Euros. It yeah, came exactly. home in 2020. It came home in 2021 when the women yeah. won. So, um, do you know who won Copper America? I think that's going on Argentina. at the same time, right? Argentina. There you go. Uh, was Messi playing? Was uh, Messi off? was injured in the first half, so he came oh, off early. Coincidence. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then, I think he's um, done for international football, right? Oh, I saw a picture of his ankle. Did not look good. Um, <laughs> but fortunately, this isn't a football podcast. Good. So. It is not. No. The rest is not football, uh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, no, we thought we'd talk today about technologies that people use alongside Tableau. Obviously, Tableau is mm -hmm. our bread and butter. It's our it's our home turf, as it were, to carry the football analogy on. Um, but we're taking some trips to the away teams, and we're going to talk about things that you might see paired with Tableau. I think I will preface this by saying, look, we are not uh, experts at these technologies, so. We kind of wanted to have this open discussion as an initial gambit um, to just talk between us, um, understand what we perceive uh, these technologies to be, but obviously we, we're going to touch a bit on what they actually do. Mm -hmm. But we'd like to invite you, the audience, to um, essentially get involved. Let us know in the comments. I love my comment section. People are so passionate. I The, the one thing I love about the YouTube channel is the people who are so polite. Like this fills me with so much joy. They they open a sentence with like, Tim, I absolutely love this video, but, and then they put a timestamp, like they put like, Stannis, know, 45 what's that minutes, Stannis 36 quote? seconds. And I'm, all, I'm always like, man, you've watched till the end, man, you, you got my heart. And then they cut into me. They're like, you got this wrong and this wrong and this wrong. And in the end, they're like, but I really love what you're doing, man. Thank you so much. Keep doing what you're doing. So, and I love that. I love that. It is that stuff that keeps me going. So, look, if that is you, um, please engage with us on this podcast. Um, we are going to try and keep to a time limit because we've got a long list here. And yeah. I know Ravi and I are fantastic at just talking endlessly. So, we're which is why we started it. the podcast in the first place. Right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. So, what we're going to try and do, I'm go I've got my iPhone here. I'm just going to kind of pull up the uh, timer app on, on my. Um, yeah. On my phone and we're going to set a timer i think four minutes maybe five minutes is more um getting, yeah, gosh, we, we can be flexible with that as as tim said i think you know you to that point that there's that stannis baratheon quote of anything before the word but is meaningless um <laughs> so, so the shit sandwiches you're getting sent to you um yeah. or on your on your comments but no genuinely like if you if um old tricks adam or <laughs> dbt dave is out there um ready to start a youtube channel to rival Claire damon <laughs> yeah exactly a, a, a colleague of mine a colleague of mine at endpoint did come up with a uh, data brick mason i was like that's very good that's very good. data they brick should, mason they should they should definitely get on with that um but talking of data bricks that is going to be our first one so let me set a timer here five minutes um right data bricks what is Databricks? Um, I, I kind of describe Databricks as a data platform rather than a database. Would that mm -hmm. be fair? Um, yeah, but it can do databasey things. I think correct. this is where people get struggle with, right? You can have Correct. delta lakes and um, lake houses within your 
data bla- databricks platform but i think yeah. it's the biggest benefit is you can do a lot of things with it and probably the most important is it's built on spark so apache yes. spark is just yes. allows for mass parallelization yeah um, yeah that gives you speed it's kind of like <laughs> i always think of it as they they started their whole platform at the sweet time when ai and machine learning and data science was actually sort of coming along. We'll come to Snowflake later. Snowflake started too early to really capitalize on that sort of core core, core structure. Maybe that's an opinion, by the way. It's not. It's it's, it's the applied side. I think that that's what Databricks wrote. That's, they, they wrote that the, is a big our, thing, yeah. our area of like being able to actually apply and mm-hmm. give you examples of where it can solve your problem. Okay, this is a problem that you have. This is how this solves it, and this is how it gets around it. Um, and you know, there's there's actually quite a common meme going around the social media platforms right now of like, what does Salesforce do? Like, can someone explain what Salesforce Please. is and what it does? Yeah. And then this is almost what you felt with with a platform like Snowflake. We'll come back to Snowflake, obviously. Yeah. But these platforms, and I think as you as you said, the timing of Databricks to come almost emerge onto the scene and say, we're a platform, but more importantly, we're a de-aggregated platform. You can yes. host us anywhere. We can connect into anything and we can connect out into anything. We're yeah. just the people in the middle that allow you to do things quite cleanly. Um, yeah. And they and kind of fast. realize the role of the warehouse in that, right? They kind of, they kind of, I think, what's the word? They reimagined the warehouse in this, in this very slightly different way to Snowflake. Um, same sort of direction, slightly different execution leads to much, much sort of deeper integration. And I think it's definitely got sort of the hearts and minds of um, a lot of companies because of that slightly more integrated, more sort of disaggregated sort of nature that you talk about. So um, super interesting. Um, have you used the Ravi? Yeah, yeah, I've used it. Yeah? It's, um, I think the nice thing is you, you can write notebooks where you start off in Python, do a bit of SQL, right. tack on a bit of R, and then execute it all as part of a, wider warehouse query um like a data factory query or you can call on the notebook via a api um, so w- would you say the learning curve is steep because of all those prerequisites you yeah. talked about r python if you've not really sort of dabbled in let's say i'm going to say data science generally but also if you've not been a multidisciplinary multiple i can't say that multidisciplinary multiplinary that's the one my multidisciplinarian in your approach to learning analytics it could be quite a steep learning curve because you've got a lot of i would say front facing things to learn and principles as well it's not just each of those things it's how do they all come together right i'd say that that's me right like i i don't i don't see myself as a data scientist and i don't i I didn't understand how a i can't do a v look up or an x look up and i don't understand how pivot tables work until ai ai is coming for your job mate Exactly. Um, <laughs> but I didn't really understand it. And then I think being able to explain in, you know, the, the fact that this thing does this, this thing does yeah. this, this thing does yeah. this is quite clear. But yeah, I, I think I, I'd agree with you. Um, there's a lot that you can do with a platform like Databricks. They don't really get into, but you can just use surface level. Here's my data lake. I want to query it and I'm going to yeah. get out. Yeah. But you can go really exactly. deep into it as well with orchestration APIs. It's it's a technology that I I feel like I I need to find a good use case for in the future. I don't feel like I've. It's not for a hobbyist, cases. right? Like no, this is exactly, purely yeah. enterprise, yeah, scalable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things that are just have to be constantly running and updated. There's no Tableau public for Databricks here, like. No. <laughs> that's called just it's just Python or Jupyter. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I I think that's a. Um, a pretty good touch on the Databricks. I think if we were to talk more about its integration with Tableau, they announced a new connector, Delta Connectors, um, literally live as of a couple of days ago. So that's a really good way of connecting to yeah. um, to Databricks. I think the advantage there is that it it, it 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 should make that easier because previously it was quite hard, right? Yeah, it, it makes it easier for sure. And like, it, it's an exciting capability that you can tap into. Mm-hmm. But in order to set up, you need a bunch of... Of a timer. <laughs> um, in order to set up, you need a bunch of like the relevant information and keys. So you might need to actually reach out to your uh, administrator. Which, if you're a 
you know, Databricks user within a large enterprise environment, you might not know right. who that is. Yeah, um, exactly. so, so this is where you get end up in that weird uh, moment where, you know, Tableau used to live of being shadow BI. Um, yeah. And maybe you end up with shadow IT to try and make your Delta Lakes connect to work. The, the other one that um, I was kindly reminded of uh, when speaking to him at the Tableau conference uh, by Thomas and Hahn was uh, the table extension, which we talked about really yes. early on. Um, We've got a previous part on this, actually, but we'll come back to that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and this can link into and call on Databricks models. So you, you have a model yeah. in Databricks, you can call on it and extend your data tables. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, like that is said, a super powerful the feature. iceberg for Databricks yeah. is, is big. Yeah. I, I think that's sort of one of the challenges with Databricks potentially. It breaks away from the Tableau mold and might be slightly tougher because it does it does require you to look beyond the the drag and drop, like the 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 sort of utopia that Tableau presents you. This this is not makes you think. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get deep into that. This is not for the like drag and drop sort of enthusiasts. It's not for the, you know, window calc dabbler this is this is like a hardcore tool a little bit yeah um, but when, anyway. when, when you if, if you've got a great data engineering team um they're probably using this yeah they, they, they will be able to like, understand your query and then help you translate it so you just deal with very pretty yeah. uh, delta tables that you just connect to and refresh as you normally would and do some magic we, we then end up living in a rosy environment <laughs> Right, the timer went off a minute ago. We went over, so we clearly have a passion for Databricks. Let me reset the timer, start it again. Let's go to Snowflake, because we brought it up again um, as we were yeah. talking about that. Um, Snowflake, I feel, was right at the curve. But I just want to call out, you pointed out Snowflake to me. I don't know, I can't literally at this point. like TC17, TC17 at the tobacco dock. You actually to, took keep... me to their stand, and we watched the demo, and I, I stood there, and I was like, I just don't get it. What yeah. is it? Like, I, I don't get it. And you explained to me it really, really well. And what it, what it, what it shows to me is that I just wasn't far along in my learning journey to really appreciate it for what it was at the time. Right. So that, that was the second time. I think we, I, I think I took you to their stall twice. The first time I was like, I, I've heard this thing, <laughs> and I think it does this. Let's go ask the guy. And I think that we were at TC in Vegas. Yeah. And we went there again. I think we both left that being like, I still don't know why I should use it yeah. over a normal yeah. database. Yeah. Right. I get it, yeah. but I just don't, I think there's a really small niche of people that this is really useful for. And that's just yeah. people that don't, yeah, there's just a smaller niche at the time. Um, but I'll also but, say this, since then, they've massively built on their platform in a way that, you know, having also been the one who's like, I don't get it. And now have a course on LinkedIn introducing people to it. So they've massively built on the platform massively yeah. in, in a way that I think they do come in competition with Databricks for a lot of what I would say the same type of workloads with data, not specifically database workloads necessarily, but the same types of work, the same types of computations. Um, but they have built, they really, like the way I think of Databricks is that Databricks have built um, a platform. You deploy it how you want, where you want. Snowflake, they've built the software. They're running it on a platform, AWS, and or as you deploy it for you. you, you. Can, it comes in multi flavors, yeah, yeah, yeah multi flavors. Yeah. But it has to be um, on a yeah a web platform. Yeah. So it's very much like a SaaS version. I know this is a bad description. <laughs> then don't come after me. But it's very much a SaaS version of what Databricks is trying to do, right? Like it's kind of like a layer that abstracts the hard work of doing that, but really people just want to get like, um, uh, close to the, to, to the metal as it was. So anyway, um, how quickly can I find this book in my library when I want it and yeah, access it, read it quickly, quickly and then put it back. So and like, it's not take this out, that. do stuff, put it back. And then it's, it's like at point of query or point of access, you're only getting that doing something mm -hmm. with it and then you're, it could then disappears. Like, and, I don't know if you watch um, Rick and Morty, but there's a thing called a MeSeeks box. No. And you press, you press a button, a little thing appears. You then say, I want to do this. It does its thing, and then it disappears. And that's exactly what it does. That's what it does. Like Siri, <laughs> the data. <laughs> yeah. That's my top. Or, or one of those auto AI, like, 
Auto GPT? Auto GPT, where it like spins up micro. Anyway, sorry, we're going off on a tangent. You triggered my uh, Siri as well, and I've just triggered it again. Jesus, I need to. There needs to be a way of disabling Siri for a period of time. This is um, this is ridiculous. I'll stop saying the word. <laughs> so, um, it is interesting. I think that. Um, hold on. Let me just stop a second because this thing is just still recording what I'm saying. This technology, man. Oh, I just hope Apple Intelligence saves Siri because that is ridiculous. But okay. Um, back to the back to Snowflake. Thanks, I Siri, think... for that interruption. <laughs> back to Snowflake. I think the other thing they've done is they've massively leaned into B2B workflows as well, right? Like the ability, the the data clean rooms, the ability to share doing that at scale i'm definitely i'm like i i've come across instances of industries centralizing on snowflake which is really good because you kind of get the economies of scale of get, of doing all of that stuff um and then the more recent partnerships over the last couple of years with nvidia to start doing containers and compute clusters in the cloud as well trying to really lean into similar kind of spaces databricks coming at it from a different angle um really powerful i is there I always wonder with Snowflake if, I always wonder if they were too early, just a tad too early, if that makes sense, right? Like, I, I, you know, the world we're living in today, and, uh, and, and I, I can't really say this because if, if you sort of tweak it a year or two here, then they're actually just at the right time. But I, I definitely didn't come across Databricks at the same time I came across Snowflake, but the rise to um, oh, there's our timer for Snowflake. The rise to like, let's say, being well known for Databricks yeah. seems to be in shorter. Is that is that fair to say? Like, I feel like Databricks has had like a five year run up, where Snowflake really did. Or a great run. marketing team. Uh, okay, fair, <laughs> fair, fair. Um, That's like shade I, I, on the Snowflake team, but yeah. No, yeah, I think um, the thing is when Snowflake came about, their competitor was Exasol. Like Exasol was right, of one course, of their competitors. I about them. Jeez, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exasol, right? Gosh, yeah. yeah. Where did they so get? So you, you had Exasol in there. You had Metrica. Metrica? HP. The HP mm-hmm. one. And then you still Vertica. had like Hadoop going Vertica? around. Vertica, 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 not Metrica. Yeah, yeah, Metrica is yeah. a football <laughs> company. This, <and> this, <laughs> um, fair, fair. Yeah. So uh, HP Vertica. Exasol. Yeah. SAP and then Exasol. Like th- th- so you're coming to a space where everything is actually about speed of query rather than like storage versus compute, which is what they so focused everyone on. Everyone just focused on the like, you know, classic, you know, gigahertz, megahertz race and suddenly Databricks comes along and say, actually that doesn't matter as much. Well it does, but really all these other If you just take out too. the process yeah. part, the transform yeah. and extract yeah. bit yeah. and then just say but you just need this, right? Yeah, Go get that exactly. then, and let us yeah. do this. Yeah. Pretty Sorry, deep Tableau. integration with, yeah. Pretty deep integration with Tableau. Um, I know. I think Tableau use Snowflake a ton, right? Um, oh, really? Uh, for their for their own um, marketing data and uh, uh, clusters. I keep hearing product developers talk about like obviously they keep their data in lots of different places, but Snowflake is their like big. Um, the big big thing I they've talked about it at conferences. So I'm not I'm not hopefully I'm not saying something I shouldn't be saying. Uh, <laughs> I'm referencing conferences just as like a standard point because I like if I could find it in a conference talk, which I can, yeah, then it's public knowledge. Um but anyway, um super interesting. I I don't think I've seen as many use cases with Snowflake as I thought I would have seen, if that makes sense. And by that I mean you know how with um, Databricks, you've got this, you know, you talked about table extensions. With Snowflake, I don't know if it's just because it's mostly within enterprise or mostly within certain sectors like fast moving consumer goods, but all these, you know, data clean rooms, all of this stuff, I haven't seen that in the Tableau world as much. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's just because I've, I'm not that deeply embedded with the, like the pro use case for this data masking as an example. Like that's a really good idea of, for something like, you know, with Tableau where we come across these sort of, common privacy questions all the time imagine being able to just do like a a parameterized um, masking operation right right inside of the query so that you're just connecting live and depending on who the user is with user um user filters or uh, forget the name of the role um 
not roles. I forget the name of the feature, but anyway, user user attributes. That's the feature. Attributes. So with user attributes being able to dynamically mask certain bits of information because you're able to look at the user attributes and just modify the query, all that stuff. In, look in used to be able to do this. Look at with LookML. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think LookML, LookML allowed yeah. you to parameterize <laughs> and do task like which is which is hilarious, right? They sell themselves as yeah. Uh, visualization tool, but the thing that you everyone always talks to you about is LookML and the fact that you can do loads of like parameterized like data yeah. filtering. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. I think the the reason for that I would possibly argue again, having less knowledge of Snowflake than you, is probably that deaggregation point. Like, if you think about yeah, platforms as aggregators, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, we had the period between twenty fourteen to twenty nineteen where like. We can do everything. We are a platform, mm -hmm. just one stop shop. And Snowflake almost became that. But then Databricks yeah. were like, yeah, no, we're like a Christmas cracker. You can open us at both ends and we'll just stay in the middle. If you want us over yeah. here, we'll go over there. If you want to go over yeah. here, we'll go over there. Um, whereas I don't know if Snowflake can do that. Therefore, extensibility in the same way we talked about with table extensions, for example, yeah. might not be the case. However, it might. Snowflake, sleep, sneeve, sneeve? Snowflake, Steve, get in touch. <laughs> Let, let's have a chat with you on the podcast uh, absolutely absolutely right let's um let's take a detour let's go to all tricks very briefly um, <laughs> very briefly well what is there to say um <laughs> I'll, t I'll i'll start i'll start because go on then <clears throat> I use Altrix every day, so um, I'll. <laughs> I think if you let me re let rip, I'll I'll go for too long. But yeah, I've not used Altrix for three years now, right? Um, possibly longer. Um, right. I. But back in 2016, 2017, if someone, uh, well, I think someone did ask me, like, if you've got to pick one of these two to back to go long. Is it Altrix or Tableau? I would have gone Altrix because there's a lot more use cases and it's a lot less crowded a field and it's really easy to use. Mm -hmm. But the price point, the limitation of the engine, and the fact that code, like almost AI would have killed it, like destroyed yeah. it completely, right? Because yeah. suddenly no code isn't that interesting or drag and drop yeah. isn't as interesting because yeah. you can find... You can have AI assistant supporting you on, on your code. Databricks AI assistant jumps at you when you don't need it, but it does solve your problem. For example. Yeah, yeah. But it's really fast, and I think the in memory for someone doing stuff locally for themselves to do. Let me just do this, 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 and this, and just as I'm thinking, I can drag something and drop it, get the answer. Okay, this is the scheme where I want. Now I'm going to show this to my data engineer. Can I build this? Go productionize it. But for that fast iteration, incredible. For the ability yeah. to implement code and automate and do batched macro jobs, fantastic. Systemic yeah. jobs, amazing. Like yeah. if you want to generate and burst PDFs and run some code and then bring it yeah. all back together. Yeah. Yes, we can do this. Yeah. Spatial. Yeah. What it yeah. he lives, breeds, and eats. Yeah. Um but it but it just didn't evolve. Um Ultrix.next, Ultrix server, Ultrix cloud, whatever you want to call it. This is just never the thing Grave you wanted it to be. Several times, yeah. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll add to what piece. you said at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. I'll add to what you said at the beginning, which is, you know, if you chose something 2016 to go long, it would have been all tricks. To this day, if I only had one tool I could use as a data analyst, like one tool, I had to pick one tool. I couldn't open... Any other data product would still be all tricks because I can muscle my way through any problem <laughs> in that tool. And they're like, maybe because I've used it for so long, I've just have, I have, I'm like, I've got it, I'm in tune. You, you're have not words. wrong because like yeah. data densification kills you in some parts of Tableau. There's just so many times you, you hit the wall you. of, yeah. you need to pivot your data and you cannot do this unless you pivot your data. And the other thing, is, Whereas in, we'll in Ultrix, on, you just you just pivot it and carry on. We'll come on to this in a second because DBT is on the list, right? But I'll, I'll say this: I have never met a tool that allows for um, accelerated ability to solve last mile problems, right? Like 
you've you you've, you've got the data you've got it so close but there's you, you just come across a use case of something in you know, all the data is right in front of you it's just not in the right format it's not in the right shape it's not in the right it's not in the right place to do the thing you need to do yeah you don't want to go back to the data team it's still all tricks and dbt and all these other tools don't solve that because what they do is they put up a new hurdle a new language a new way of processing whereas all tricks allows you to stay in that sort of visual frame of the data like rows and columns right and you can just get the data to where you need it to still to this day the best tool at that i know there's other players prep we'll talk about ensos as well later on but uh, it's just it's just such a loss this, this is this is such classic like you know when you're just like ah oh, it's so good and i love it so much but it's not the one and you know it's it's you got it yeah go. it's that not is you, my heart talking me. That's my heart. It's not talking, you, it's it? me. I can fix him. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. And I, we said we wouldn't talk long about this. And here I am basically writing a love letter to all tricks. Um, but nonetheless, listen, they've not kept up with the cloud. They missed their Pricing AWS structure moment. Pricing yeah. structure killed them. Pricing structure killed them. Pricing structure still so kills sticky. them today. Still kills them today. Um, and there, there is... There's just a lot of very, um, I think, difficult difficult things for people to get if they've not used a tool before. Like if you're sort of introducing some new tool tricks, uh, that philosophy in all tricks is quite hard to understand. It's sort of derived yeah. from years ago, but in today's world, it just it's just really grates against that way people think about data. But I still stand by it. If all they did, and it sounds simple to say, if all they did was they took their core product, all trick designer. Push it into this modern world. Put it in a browser, for goodness sake. Put it on a Mac, for goodness sake. A like bare minimum, put it on a Mac. Bring it to data scientists in a fresh way, right? Bring it to data analysts in a fresh way. Make it play nice alongside the things they already do. Tableau, Power BI. Just make it a companion to those things. It doesn't even have to be a I've, strong I've, product on I've, its own. I've got, I've got a killer there, right? Yeah. Imagine, imagine yeah. the simplicity of old tricks and then yeah. once you're done you can output it into a jupyter notebook and it will do yes. everything for you yes. you can yes. then push it into yes. r it's done it for yeah. you you want it in python here you go yeah. you want to do this all in sql this is the, the things you can do they have it in in databases literally that you do your data prep you do your thing and then there's a little thing you're saying oh would you like me to write the sql for you da -da. it's literally there like just it lots of people a lot, <laughs> Lots of people describe it as a Swiss Army knife. Just lean into that, man, and build the platform, the cloud platform that's deserving of designer rather than trying to make the platform its own yeah. separate product. Anyway, we need to still sponsor shirts. McLaren, are they? Are they still sponsoring yes. McLaren? Yes. yes, absolutely. A great sponsor. I keep seeing Lando Norris. Well, uh, Ultrix are getting great value for money because they bought that. When McLaren was nowhere, and I think I believe that McLaren not even in the Bond midfield. Band. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> probably the first two years of that sponsorship, that was probably looking sketchy, and then in the last year, it's come through real good. Like the real amount of times Lando Norris has been on on the podium is unbelievable, and I keep looking at the jacket. The sponsorship position moves. The sponsorship position moves. It did used to be like quite prominent, and then it's now on the sides, like in the long list of names. Sometimes it's on the front nose of the car, so. It's not got a permanent spot, but it does move around. So, you know, I'm still waiting for that race where it's like right on the front nose and like it's a race. Or it's a piece of race. debris that's flown off into the distance and you yeah, just see all yeah, tricks fly yeah. across the screen. <laughs> uh, that is a that is a slow mo moment I'm waiting for. Something to happen and then just you just see the old tricks like <laughs> in that slow mo shot. <laughs> Brilliant. Um Right, let's let's go on to DBT. Moving. DBT's yeah. next. DBT's next. Um, gosh, I think DBT started off with an open source tool. For anyone who's wondering what is DBT, I didn't even describe all tricks. Um, I'm really sorry. We won't go back to that. <laughs> drag and drop tool makes it <laughs> drag and drop visual yeah. analysis, visual data cleansing, prep, yeah. wizardry, predictive wizardry mapping. You kind of did actually. So let's just carry on. DBT. Um, I kind of the way I describe DBT is imagine SQL, but with smarts on top. Basically, that's that's basically how I describe DBT. And the big problem they have is I think they built a great open source product. Everyone was like, "This is amazing," and then they tried to build a company on top of that, 
and everything went to their cloud platform. And I think that's been like a difficult transition for people to understand, right? Um, but there's a lot of good principles like, you know, there's, you know, I think if anyone ever talks to you about semantic layer, they're really ultimately talking about some of the capabilities in DBT. I know other tools do the same thing, but nonetheless, yeah, they're talking about DBT. So, I mean, do you use it in your work, like in, in what you do? No? Interesting. It, it's, it's, it's another one of those things that you hear the name and then you ask your trusted circle of data nerds being like, do you use it? should I care about DBT? And then they tell you, yeah, or no, or I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> I keep hearing yeah. it as well. Tell me when you find out more. Tell me when you find out when it's good. I've used it for a project. I can't talk about the project, but what I, I, I came into this project midway through. So I like, if it was my choice, I wouldn't have built this on DBT because I would have built it in Alteryx. And then I would have struggled with Alteryx. Of course, I do everything in Alteryx. There's a theme here. But what was interesting about, experiencing dbt and i experienced two flavors of dbt dbt core which is the open source version and dbt cloud which is the paid version runs in the cloud my experience of cloud was fantastic really good like the lineage was oh chef's kiss i was like damn this is nice like where is this in all tricks like i know they had a data or in any other data product. product to have that clear yeah, version just, control oh, ci cd yes, hey, you, yes. You, you, this 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 model here this python thing you've got yeah it goes here and then it goes here this take a step back here's everything. exactly yeah like beautiful and then the thing i said earlier on if you recall last man analytics killed me like <laughs> the amount of times i got into the workbook and i was like god damn it it's gonna go back into my model and like fiddle with this and fiddle with that that's my wife calling me it's fine um fiddle with this fiddle with that and then i'm like oh god i did to build the whole model like jesus i could have just written a nice beautiful like lod right here and just solve this but no we're doing things the dbt way um uh a, a, a product developer we both know well who happens to work on calculations described it as uh uh communism for data sources <laughs> 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 Which I, which when he said it, I didn't get it. But like, when I think about it, I'm like, actually nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. <laughs> so, so true. Like, I'm, I'm just looking at the docs now. Um, right. And any docs that automatically goes into dark mode, you know, the people that are using it. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Like they've thought about it. They've thought about it. You know what? Like the people who are going to be deep in these docs want dark mode immediately. They don't want to start off with you know, this white, white stuff. Um, but no, yeah. and I think I think the fr from the website and from what I've heard, and the the reason I sort of almost asked was exactly that the back, the fact that you can deploy as you can deploy many things and then follow it almost like yeah. this meta layer. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you can do the nitty gritty, but you also get the yeah. meta layer. But you're yeah. not nimble because it's again designed for enterprise, not for yeah. your yeah. mom and pop doing your Strava analytics. Like you know, this is Strava analytics in here, right? No. Same, same no. with Databricks. No. But Snowflake, you might, right? You but you might. might use a community version of yeah. Snowflake to host your, your personal data. Yeah, you can just start up a new trial every every month with a new email. That's how, that's how you get free Snowflake. <laughs> um, but if I go back to DBT, I think the bit I really struggle with is DBT Core. And man, DBT Core, that is painful because you don't get all the same niceties. Um, it's a bit it's a bit like that sort of rough experience you get with... Um, with uh, no Explorer, no Mesh, yeah, no Semantic yeah. Layer. DBT. Um, I think it's still quite promising. I, this is not gonna sound nasty. Is it a product or is it a feature? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> So you, it sounds like you're saying DBT is going to get bought out by Databricks or Snowflake or someone and absorbed into their product. It is or it? the principles, or, 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 or do you think that the principles but shouldn't that it have... be that? Sh surely yeah. the way DBT works is exactly that. Tell me that it doesn't belong inside of an analytics platform that's decoupled, that it is agnostic to you know where it's come from. It's the thing you put on top of your platform to orchestrate it. It doesn't matter what it is. It's a feature, surely. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Of, I'm trying to think of another product that 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 almost does that. 
And it's usually freemium stuff, right? Like it's Correct. like, oh yeah, yeah. Correct. So maybe this explains why people struggle with using it because you just like, well, oh, I can just do this myself with my own little stored procedures and SQL and all this stuff, right? Like, so yeah, maybe a brutal ending there. Is it a product or is it a feature? We'll come back to that later. Um, Enso. Enso makes Enso. an actual nice The, the new step. kid on the block. Yes. Interestingly, it allows me to go back to my love, all tricks, because of got many of the same technical team right like the very very hard of the product adam riley steve harding i think as well yeah, yeah? steve harding the original creator of the ultra james dunkley yeah james exactly exactly this, this is like the greatest hits of let me even go further and say this is that era is of ned there? Ned, is, it, ned, ned, harding, harding. Ned, ned harding sorry ned harding now i'll go back to like 20, is it 2015, Ravi? You've got Libby, you've got Ned, you've got um, uh, Adam Riley, Crew Macros. There was just a sweet spot there where all tricks was like, use a British term. I've, filthy, I've, right? I've, I've got a great aside here. So um, <laughs> Go for it, go for it. I think it was, it was, it was at one of the all tricks conferences in London. Uh, and Will Griffiths, good friend of mine, former data school consultant. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was him or Ben Moss created a ma Ultrix macro called the Scrambler because right. oh, that. <laughs> yeah, the YXMD <laughs> file, the Ultrix um, file that you use to open up workflows is just XML. So obviously if you can find out the X and Y coordinates of everything on your canvas and then just randomize it, what you'll get at the end of it is just all of your tools everywhere when you just put it through the randomizer, the scrambler. But it still works. But it still works. You can still <laughs> run it. It's just in a horrible order. Um, so Ned, Ned's in London, and we're, we're talking to him, Adam Riley, James Dunkley, and Ben's like, show, show Ned the scrambler. Um, so we go through it, show him, explain it to him. And Ned's words were, when I, when I you know, wrote built, designed Alteryx back in the 90s. Didn't see this as one of the use cases. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love fantastic. it. Love it. Love it. So, yeah, Enso. Um, cloud native. Uh, I think it brings, oh, dare I say it, the philosophy of Alteryx, but to a modern, to a modern, to a modern world. And I'm not going to go as far as saying it is all tricks. I'm not going to go as far as saying, um, you know, you know, they're just forking all tricks whatever, because I don't think they are. I've seen some posts that um, uh, Adam Riley, his name is so hard. I just think of him as Mr. Crew Macros. That's in my head. I just want to say the guy who built Crew Macros. Chaos I always Raising forget. Yeah. yeah. Um, I always forget the name. Adam Riley, Adam Riley, Adam Riley. I won't forget it now. Um, Every time I see Adam Riley do a demo on LinkedIn, there's always a little bit more thought that goes into some of the simpler tools that we, we, we've we never seen in Alteryx. And it goes all the way into UX and UI. And it actually reminds me, this is this is what the core problem is. You know, Ravi, you have not used Alteryx in five years. Let me let you into something. Not much has changed. You're not missing much. <laughs> <laughs> and it's... Every when I look at I see the Alteryx Grand Prix, and I'm like, that's the same... <laughs> Same. It's literally the same but, interface. But again, you can make the same argument about Tableau. What's changed in Tableau Desktop, Tim? What's changed in Tableau Desktop? Everything. Jesus, right, don't extension. get me started. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> it's not for the dashboard designers anymore, Tim. <laughs> oh, look, it's to the core. It's to the core. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I've been on a roller coaster ride about that. We'll save that for another podcast. But going back to Enso. It just feels like some of those initial places. It's very clear the product team did want to go, did want to go and understand and discover and reimagine and re envision. They're getting the opportunity to do that in Enso. Um, and I think, you know, if you're listening to this, go check out Enso and don't come at it from an altered perspective. Go with a sort of a neutral mind, a clean mind, as it were, evaluate it for the product it is. And I think you'll yeah. find um, <clears throat> something quite surprisingly nice. Um, so it's quite good. I think again the 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 benefits of Tableau and Alteryx have always been you can think and do in the same flow, right? Like yeah. you 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 end up in a flow state. It looks like Enso are to almost taking this yeah. um, from a flow state. Just, yeah. just looking at the um, the documentation, 
uh, there in the getting started, there's reading a CSV, passing, selecting comments, how tos, and so documentation. The fourth one is your journey from to Enso brackets from Alteryx. Oh yeah, they're going for it hard, right? And uh, they're not the only ones. Um, we'll touch on Data IQ maybe in a bit. Um, uh, also going for the Alteryx customer very very yeah. hard. I think everyone's just looking at Alteryx and go, yeah, we'll have a bit of that. Um, who is it? Um, Five Tran. No, I kind of think feel like had their moment taking a bit of Alteryx's uh, lunch. Um, I love the philosophy behind Fivetran, which is, uh, oh, to hell with the freaking macros and the flows. We'll just tell you the answer. Like, we'll just do the work for you and just give you beautiful tables. And by the way, you want DBT here? Yeah, we've even built these DBT models for you. Uh, you know, off you go. Like, I am still shocked by how easy it was to go from not a Fivetran customer to a paying Fivetran customer who, within 30 minutes, had exported my entire YouTube analytics for the last six months to Snowflake in 30 minutes. Now, I know... Speed or ease? Both. Was it just doing the work for you? Just both. Just both. I literally turned up to Snowflake 30 minutes later. I looked at the tables. I looked at the architecture. I looked at the models it done, and I was like, perfect. I've I've got what I need. I, I don't even need to think about it. I just literally opened Tableau. And a problem that would have you know, taken quite a lot of considerable effort and time is just solved. Now, was the cost okay? I know five trans is quite expensive. Airbyte is cheaper, does the same thing, of course. But I also wonder, like, why didn't Altrix just lean into some of that as well in the past, right? Anyway, keep going back to Altrix. Keep going. Can you tell that I love the product, but I hate where it's gone? <laughs> Just play a violin yeah. in the background. I'm yeah. tablet too, but now I'm out here crying my soul out for all tricks. Like, <laughs> I will yeah, you. You, you know this better than anyone, Ravi. It's probably because of the amount of time I've spent in that product solving stuff for customers, right? Like those I, FMCG projects, Tim. Oh like, my those word! Are some FMCG we had. recently insurance. 90% of my time was in Alteryx, solving huge problems. 10% of my time was in Tableau because I solved it all in, 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 in Alteryx. So anyway, we've moved on. And so check it out. DBT, check it out. Data IQ, check them out as well. We've got the cloud platforms. So I'm going to rattle them off. There's only really three you need to be aware of. <laughs> Azure, AWS, Google Cloud Platform. Um, even GCP, you can almost like start to be like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, because yeah, like, I, I don't know any, I don't, I don't know many positive people when they use GCP. It's so, fine. It's hard to that. use. It's you all cloud. That. But in the AI world, where you're gonna run your, cheap? where you're gonna run your uh, um, um, AI compute. Um, <sighs> God, I can't get my words out. What is the word? Where are you going to run your transformer models? That's what I was looking for. <laughs> um, so Google Cloud Platform, transformer models, this is where you run them. I I think this this is about to change. If you talk about Azure, yeah. Amazon, GCP, Azure is the only place you can run chat GPT models. Fine. Lots of people are going there. Um, Google is the only other person. I think a lot of people want there to be other competitors to Google. So... I think GCP might have some benefit in being the only other place, but Amazon is not really part of that, right? Amazon's not part of that sort of, let's say, dialogue, other than it's still the place you go to run compute to prepare your data to be able to run it through AI models. So they they are like a transitory platform for all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's sort of a... So... so... <clears throat> So my my view is that the reason I don't see much future in in GCP or like, um, you know, sorry, not much future. I think it will be used, but it's just it is just always used less. What I'm right. what I'm why I think AWS and Azure sort of live longer is because they have bigger customers that use them for everything and. Right. The scale of it, like in the coverage they have, is just massive. They're kind of massive. baked in, aren't they? Yeah, they're baked into and, the and like, For example, in in order to have Azure, any like anything with Azure, be it 
you just need the platform. And once you have the platform, you may as well get Microsoft SQL Server. You may as well start using Power Automate. You may as well start going through all of the different things you have um, that are available for um, for Microsoft. And AWS the same. Like it's really easy and really it's a really nice platform to use. And it's like when you and me both did the certification around the same time, right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. it's such a nice platform to learn. It makes sense completely, and you can you can build from there. And again, all three of these, to an extent, work quite nicely with Tableau. I think GCP is the only one that doesn't, because BigQuery yeah. is very difficult to connect up to Tableau, in my opinion. I've never had a, yeah. um, an, a, I've never had a positive experience with BigQuery in Tableau. But Google Gregory, GCP Gregory will come on this podcast and talk to I'd us. I say about. George. GCP George. There we go. GCP um, George will come on. Greg or um, George, one of the two. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. I still I think GCP still lives on purely because it's Google and Google probably run a ton of their own stuff off GCP as well. I mean, <laughs> and like and then Apple run a ton of stuff of, of GCP and Amazon to be fair. And then a lot of like what I would call uh, Spotify run off GCP. And so if I start to list the companies that run off GCP, a lot of the companies that do that purely do that because they want to be able to have something against Amazon because Amazon is like a big, a big, big share of the cloud. So GCP lives because Amazon exists, right? It's not, yeah. it, you know, it will never die because you always need something that isn't Azure <laughs> against Amazon. <laughs> I mean, again, I, I feel like of, of the of the three, if you're talking, talking about their database and connecting to their data, I... Yeah have had no joy with BigQuery. I've had very little joy with Redshift and Athena. And the SQL Server's been all right. Yeah. Um, so of the three, if you're connecting data, I'm, 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 I'm an Azure man Fair. to Fair. start with. And, and it's going to be hard for you to move out of that, even if it's to Amazon or something like that, right? Because it's the yeah. enterprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if we talk about Tableau, and we talk yeah. about these technologies, right? Azure, well, in Azure, you've got Microsoft SQL Server, you've got obviously Power BI, we'll bring that up, because um, mm -hmm. it's kind of part of the ecosystem. Um, what else have you got in Azure that really works well? with oh, Windows Active Directory, uh, all that jazz. You've got Microsoft Suite, obviously. I These are not in Azure, but they are intrinsic in your contract with Microsoft, I assume, to have Office 365, Azure, and everything else. So I think it's levels. Like package, I, mean, yeah. I don't know yeah. how the commercials or whatever work, but it's just levels, isn't it? I'm sure it's levels, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Amazon, apart from the compute and some of their database technology, which is pretty good, Redshift never really took off like it was supposed to, right? Redshift had its sort of snowflake moment and then fell flat, in my opinion. They never really sort of lit the fire of the industry because you know, the Amazon pricing model just meant that the more you used it, the richer they got and, you know, it didn't, the economics didn't quite level off. And actually, we're seeing a trend to move away back to on premise now uh, with a lot of companies, to, right? To it's becoming quite cold, popular. bare metal. Yeah, exactly. I love that phrase, bare metal. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just think like the, 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 the hardware engineers needed something cool. So they're like, yeah, bare metal, man. Anyway, <laughs> um, the cloud platform is super interesting. GCP doesn't have something that hooks you in. That's ultimately the problem there, right? Yeah. And from a Tableau perspective, all you're really doing, connectors, potentially, some of the data sources in there. Um, you've got, uh, is it Firebase, which is the really commonly used GCP um, data yeah. source, I think. Uh, GCP, hold on, let me just sort of Google this. Um, da, 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 da. Of course, with Tableau, I, forget, I do forget, it's not really GCP, you've got your connectors to... Um, BigQuery, Google Sheets, Google Analytics as well, right? Those are like your big things, but Google Analytics and Google Sheets don't need Google Cloud Platform. I know they probably do run off the same architecture, but I don't think you really need them. Um, trying to look at see what else they've got. Not really much yeah, else. Firebase is real time. They've got MongoDB yeah. apps. Compute Engine VM, then download Tableau. Okay, Analytics Platform for your entire team. So you can put Tableau Server on their compute. And their VMs. So that's probably the only other use. As if the Tableau server is not going to die a death slowly. But uh, yeah, like that's about it, right? 
um, yeah. run 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 your server in containers or whatever in in, in in Google. That's pretty much the end of that. Good. Um, honorable mentions before we call it a day. Uh, we touched on Power BI. Don't really use it with Tableau, but I kind of think like if you're a day trainer today and you're only learning Tableau, you're kind of not really selling yourself to the market. You've got to be learning Power BI, and I say that in the nicest possible way. Somebody who hates Power BI will not be made to learn Power BI properly unless I really have to. I've done a good enough job talking about Tableau to avoid that. Um, but yeah, like if Power you're learning, BI Pete, come at us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's actually, you know, Baz Power. There's, there's quite a few Power BI channels. None of them went with my naming moniker, so maybe that's a hint I should have taken. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's good. Sigma comes up from time to time, competitor of uh, Tableau. Don't have to use it with Tableau, but if you're going to learn something super, super bleeding edge and modern, it would probably be Sigma. Where I think Sigma falls down, have you used it? I've just seen some guerrilla marketing, that's all. Yeah. So, it, okay. On the marketing, I'm just not a fan of Sigma marketing. It just misses the, misses the whole point of the tool, in my opinion waste too much energy focusing on Tableau when they should just focus on the thing they're really good at, and that is enabling people to build analytical workflows. End of. Not workflows in the sense of all tricks, but workflows in the sense of dashboards that should be apps. Sigma goes that one level further and lets you build that app right within the dashboard. Let's you go a little bit further than your typical thing. It's got right back natively built in. But here, here's the kicker, like, want to connect to fat files? Not in Sigma. So it's also very very modern like it's so modern it might break some of the large like you know companies that we come across where unfortunately there is that one excel file somewhere in the organization that everything is of, reliant on yeah, yeah yeah exactly everything is in the cloud this is in that and then you go to you go to the country manager and you go oh where's this lookup table oh it's in my one drive and you're like you have that moment, um, you know, was that Chris Lawrence in Bad Boys? You know, he has that meme where like yeah. shit gets real and his eyes get bright open. You're like, where, like, why are you keeping that in OneDrive? Yeah, happens in every situation. Sigma is not the tool for that. But I'm enjoying their sort of content. I'm enjoying what they're sort of saying. I love Luke Stankies and um, Luke Stocks. Um, you know, history of uh, analytics uh, that they keep doing on the Sigma channel. They keep doing these sort of short videos giving given their heritage. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's quite biased towards Sigma positively, but yeah. Um, interesting to see where they go. Stop focusing on Tableau. Just, 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 just do your just job do your well. Thing. Yeah, exactly. And it's doing its job well. It's just, it's just too focused on Tableau. The, the other problem with that is Tableau is an actual platform, uh, like in the nicest possible way. If I say, Tableau, Sigma, Power BI, you just immediately discount Sigma to any customer. They've never heard of Sigma. And so they've just got this really long path to building. Name recognition local, matters, right? Like name, name, recognition. name recognition really matters. And it, it's that age old saying, no, no one ever got fired for you know, uh, buying IBM, right? Like in analytics, no one ever got fired for buying Tableau and Power BI. Yeah. <laughs> that is where those incumbent tools are. And um, so, yeah, anything we missed, any other honorable mentions? I don't think so. I think, I mean, uh, yes, th there are many that we have missed, um, but I, I don't think there's anything major that we want to talk about that yeah. we said we would. That um, we want to talk about is a very fair way to put it. Like this, I'm <laughs> sure there's other tools. And if we've missed your tool and you love your tool, we're really sorry. MongoDB, always... like you can you can keep reeling off all of these things. You can do the <laughs> game of tech tool or Pokemon, um, oh, which I think God. is still that, that that website is still live. Um, yeah. Yeah. But no, it's I think it's, it's useful to just get, go through and talk about these things. And I think is this it, will this episode be as dry as that hyper episode we did? Maybe for some people. Um, <laughs> But I think oh, I think it's Ravi, the... you've not seen my editing skills. Wait till I get these into TikToks and shorts. You won't, you won't like, know bam, what's bam, coming. Bam. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the the edits and the cuts will be so fast, they'll yeah. be filthy. <laughs> no, I think it's um, I think it, we, we've we've covered a lot there. Um, but no, genuinely, if if you have dear listener, any thoughts, anything that you think we should we should dig a bit deeper into, or uh, you want to come on and discuss something with us, I think you know. 
one of the reasons I think we wanted to do this is almost to open the arms of like, tell us we're wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come talk to us about it so we can yeah. grill you on, um, and learn, learn at the same time. Like, I think, yeah, Enzo, Databricks, maybe even some product manager, somewhere old tricks who's like clinging on being like, please don't go. Um, <laughs> yeah. All good. Right. Um, Next episode, we should talk about 24.2. Um, yes. We should talk about um, some other stuff. It's um, tablet dying. Let's go back to the core, Andy. Let's go back to the core. Bam! 24.2. Is Tableau dying? Does Salesforce care? Let's cover it all. <laughs> let's just deal with it. <laughs> Hot takes to come. Hot takes to yeah, come. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Super. Those are, those are great topics. We will like, generally cover them, I jest. But, um, you know, I was in touch with someone on Reddit who posted something. Oh, is it even worth learning Tableau anymore? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, that's the wrong question. The question should be it's asked. It's which parts of Tableau are worth digging learning. deeper into exactly viz exactly. extensions exactly the data, if you think the it's viz the same service api yeah if it's the same thing that you know everyone's blogging about still from the last five years no don't like it's not about building beautiful stuff in tableau public to become like you know top data analysts like the way companies are going people are moving further into the stack so we'll talk about that next week and where I think like the sweet spot in terms of skills is, and also I'll say something controversial, it doesn't all have to be about Tableau. Like people shouldn't be learning anything wedded to a tool. They should be learning agnostic skills. It's easy to pick up the tools once you're in front of them. It's hard to know the core skills whilst yeah. you're in front of the tool. So learn those first. Anyway, more next week. To be continued. <laughs> Take care, mate. Super. Take care, everyone.